สวัสดีค่ะ So this is gonna be the experiment number three on acid base hydration. Objectives on this experiment is for you to practice hydration technique and to use that to determine the concentration of acids by acid base hydration. The acid that you r e gonna find the concentrations are hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid. The t r i t r a t i o n is a technique where a solution of known concentration is used to determine the concentration of unknown solution. Uh, the equipments are shown here. You need a burette to let the t r i t r a n t t r i t r a n t which is the known concentration solution, add the t r i t r a n t dropwise into this. Analyte or sample that you need to find concentration. Um, control the speed with this stopper. The t r i t r a n is added from b u r e t to a known quantity of analyte. You have to know the volume of the analyte, and you find out how much the t r i t r a n is needed to complete the reaction. The important terms in t r i t r a t i o n are the equivalence point, the end point. The equivalence point is the point where the reaction is complete. This is where the stoichiometry quantity of acid is equal to the stoichiometry quantity of base for the acid-base t r i t r a t i o n So you must know the uh, kind of mole ratio between acid and base. Otherwise, you will not be able to do the calculation. The equivalence point sometimes you can't see by eyes, so you need to see the end point instead. The end point is the point where the solution changes color. Why the solution changes color? Because you use indicator to indicate this end point. Indicator is a substance that shows different colors in acid and base solution, or a solution that have different pH value. The endpoint is gonna be good, which is close to equivalence point only when you select a good indicator. Good indicator will signal the good endpoint, which is closer to. Equivalence point. So this is the important things in t r i t r a t i o n In calculation, as I said, you need a balanced equation, or at least you must know the mole ratio between acid and base. How many more of acid is required to react with how many more of base? So you can prepare this mole ratio for equivalence point. In this example, the mole ratio between acid and base is A to B. Is A to B. Always set up the calculation in this way. So when you rearrange, rearrange the mole, mole base to here, and move the A down here, you would get this relation, which show that the stoichiometry coefficient of each substance will be. Divided here, okay. Never forget this one. Even though many students seem to forget about this, the mole ratio between acid and base is not always one to one. So please never forget this one. Since mole is equal to concentration times volume. So we can substitute the mole here with concentration of acid multiplied by volume of acid, and mole base here going to be concentration of base multiplied by volume of base. Now in this experiment, it's separated into three parts. Part number one, part number one. This is the preparation of the KHP solution, potassium. Hydrogen phthalate solution. We need to prepare this solution 
for the standardization of sodium hydroxide in the second part. We need to find a true concentration of sodium hydroxide. Then in the third part, this is our objective to find the concentration of acid, which I said you're gonna find concentration of hydrochloric and sulfuric acid. So the chemicals that you need are phenolphthalein. This is your indicator. You need potassium hydrogen phthalate, the primary standard. You need sodium hydroxide. This is your tritrant. And of course, the acid that you need to find concentration, hydrochloric and sulfuric acid. Okay, part one. This is the preparation of solution. You did this since semester one. Okay, we're gonna prepare KHP solution. The KHP is a short name for potassium hydrogen phthalate. The formula is shown here. This is a primary standard, a primary standard. It is used to standardize sodium hydroxide. So this first part is only to prepare solution. So everyone must do this in the lab. Uh, every group, sorry. So you need to do the calculation. This is what you need to prepare. Prepare 50 milliliter of 0.1 xx, 0.1 xx, molar of potassium hydrogen phthalate solution. This is the formula that you need for calculation. You need concentration, 0.1 molar. You need volume, 50 milliliter. You need to know the mass of KHP. You can't do this. This is the mole. You know concentration and volume that you need, you can calculate the mole of KHP. And then you need to know molecular weight of KHP, which is 204.22 gram per mole. So the first task for you is to calculate the mass of KHP that you need. So everyone has to do this before going to the lab. Once you know the mass of KHP, then you go to weigh up, uh -huh. weigh required amount of KHP into a small bigger. And then of course, when you want to prepare solution, you need 50 milliliter. So you bring the volumetric flask, 50 milliliter. Uh -huh. This is the required amount of KHP and take distilled water to prepare solution. Prepare the solution by following the step here. Dissolve KHP with distilled water. You may need to add more water if KHP is not fully dissolved. Once you get the clear solution like this, okay, rinse the uh, stirrer a bit. Transfer the clear solution into the volumetric flask. and rinse the bigger a few times. Then add more water to the mark. Stop before the mark, bring it up to I level use the dropper to help you slowly adding water so that the 
bottom of the liquid touch the mark and then mix it thoroughly by turning it upside down a few times. Okay, your KHP solution is prepared. Next is the second part. You're going to use the KHP solution to find a true concentration of sodium hydroxide. This step or this part is called the standardization. Sodium hydroxide is not a primary standard because it takes on the humidity in the air very easily. So the purity of the solution that you prepare is uh, not correct. You need to standardize the sodium hydroxide solution with this KHP in order to get the true concentration of sodium hydroxide. We're going to use the titration anyway to do this because KHP is an acid. Sodium hydroxide is a base, so we do acid-based titration anyway. So the first thing that you do for the dehydration is to set up a burette. This is sodium hydroxide solution, a stand, a burette. Okay. To set up the burette, you do this step. Rinse the burette with distilled water first. Take it off the stand. Add some distilled water and then drain it away in the waste beaker. After distilled water, you rinse it again with the tritrant. This time we use sodium hydroxide, so add small amount of sodium hydroxide in. And rotate the burette to cover the inside of the burette with the titrant and also drain it away. This is the waste now. Okay, put the burette back onto the stand and if you are not tall enough, bring it down to the chair and add sodium hydroxide in. The first time, don't add it up to the top just yet. Because you need to check the air trap at the end of the billet. Always remove the air trap here. Okay. When everything is done, you will add more sodium hydroxide. This time you can add it up to the top or to whatever volume you need. And then you're going to adjust the level to record the initial volume before titration. Always do this at eye level. Eye on the level of solution. See the meniscus, the bottom of the liquid here you are this is the zero point zero record this initial volume the burret is set up for titration now prepare the sample you're gonna titrate sodium hydroxide with KHP so this is the KHP that you prepared you're going to have to pipette it 10 milliliter 
of this standard solution into an aluminum flask, you need a pipette, a pipette bulb, a flask. Okay, now we are ready for titration. We have our sample KHP. We have burette set up, so it check. KHP is prepared. You record your initial volume of sodium hydroxide in the burette. Uh, in this video, we start at 0, 0.0, but you don't need to start at 0, 0.0. You can start at any point as long as you have enough Try trend in your burette. Start by adding few drops of phenolphthalein in the flask. And then turn the stopper to add the sodium hydroxide into the flask. Continuously swirl the flask. During titration, swirl all the time. Keep eyes on the flask. So that when it's near the end point, or when the color stay a little bit longer, you do the titration by adding sodium hydroxide drop by drop. When the pink color is observed, you stop, turn off the stopper, stop the flow. So the titration is done. Next, you record the final volume of sodium hydroxide. Again, if you are not tall, bring it down. On the chair, you may use the paper to help reading the volume at the meniscus. Record this final volume into your report. And once you finish the first one, you repeat the titration the second time, or maybe more than two times, but keep the result of two trials in which the volume of sodium hydroxide used for the reaction are within 0.5 milliliter difference between one another. Keep these two uh, results and then do the average of the concentration of sodium hydroxide. This is the calculation. The reaction between KHP and sodium hydroxide, the mole ratio is one to one. So you can create this mathematics equation. You know KHP concentration. No concentration of KHP, no volume of KHP. You know volume of sodium hydroxide. This is the volume reading from the burette to get to the end point. Calculate this concentration of sodium hydroxide. The second part is done. Come to the third part, which is our objective of the experiment. We need to find concentrations of acids. Two types, monoprotic acid, diprotic acid, both are strong acid. Follow the same step as part two, which means prepare the sample in the flask, set up the burette, record the initial volume, and then titrate with sodium hydroxide, once you're done, you calculate the concentration of acids. So the following 
of video are just the example of the steps for sulfuric acid. You do the same with hydrochloric acid, นะคะ Okay, start by preparing samples. Prepare 10 ml of acid into clean aluminum flask. You need at least two trials. So prepare two flasks. Let the liquid flow nicely into the flask. Do not blow the pipette. Okay. Do not forget to add indicator into the acid sample. Just a few drops. Then check the bill rate. If you have enough, try trend. If not, you may need to fill it up. And do this at eye level. Adjust the level of solution in the bill rate to uh, record the initial volume. Bring it back to the table and do the titration. See, both hands are needed. One control the stopper, one keep the flask swirling all the time until you get the end point as pink color here. Uh, when you are done, do the calculation part. This is for hydrochloric acid, one to one more ratio. So more hydrochloric acid equal to more of sodium hydroxide change into concentration and volume. Find concentration of hydrochloric acid. You need results of two trials that have volume of sodium hydroxide between 0.5 milliliter difference of one another. For the sulfuric acid, the more ratio change to one more of acid needs two more of beds. So the equation has to have this number two here. Don't forget this. Find out concentration of sulfuric acid and then uh, complete the report. Naka. If you still don't understand of any part, uh, replay the video again because I'm not going to repeat this in class when you come to the lab class, you can start the first part directly. Okay, see you soon. สวัสดีค่ะ.